Hello everyone and welcome to Piano Vault. This is Emma Newman. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how imagination and singing affect our piano playing and helps overcome some technical problems that cannot be solved by traditional way of practicing. In part one of this video, I explained how following the melody pattern with your wrist uh, helps it become more flexible and free of any tension. Uh, so you can click here to watch that video. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a small tip uh, that will also benefit your wrist. Teachers usually don't explain anything about elbow, except maybe sometimes they would mention you don't have to keep too close them to your torso when indeed elbows is a wonderful tool to uh, to release any tension in your wrist uh, to avoid any healthy twisting with your wrist and also it absolutely helpful in the large leap technique <laughs> unwanted twisting of wrist that doesn't go with melody pattern uh, which we know we have to follow with our wrist so for example if we talk about scales or arpeggios in scales there are two positions one position second position so if I wouldn't uh, move my elbow I would do like this So my wrist, instead of keeping the same shape, the same stroke of movement, this way when I go up and this way when I go down, according to the melody pattern, it would change its shape many, many times and that would slow down your technique, trust me. Now, what you need to do, you need to move, for example, when you play with your third finger, you move your elbow to the right and then you have space again to keep your wrist this way. down the same way. In arpeggios, again, how students usually play is this way. Twist, 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 and backwards, and maybe elbow also goes like this. So what we need to do, elbow move, wrist shape is the same. In this case, it's very easy to reach a uh, fluent technique while playing arpeggios. So if I'm playing chords, for example, I would first move my wrist and then I would move my elbow to the new position. The same here, elbow first and elbow is the rest of the hand. So if you do this correctly, that would 
bring speed and accuracy to all your jumps. Uh, and the same thing, for example, in the waltz accompaniment, which we can find in Chopin. So, for example, let's a little bit change it here. So, I would play bass and then my elbow would move up and wrist left and then elbow left. So if I play in fast tempos, it does look quite natural. Uh, no effort to play this, and if you do this correctly, that wouldn't distract you from enjoying your beautiful melody with this marvelous accompaniment. So then how it works? to the right on every fifth note and I would move my elbow to the left on every first note. So over here for example you're going a little bit beyond. I cannot stretch my hand to this. I mean I can but I would prefer to keep it relaxed. So it's definitely a new position for me. One, two, three, four, five to the right, one to the left. And again, where it's obvious, we're gonna change position big leaps, like here, elbow right, elbow left, elbow right, elbow right, left. And all the time I'm doing the same. Uh, that's it! It's that simple, and in my next video I will explain how to develop finger muscles in the palm of your hand. And if you never heard about this, go ahead and check that video. So that will help to control the touch and technique and tone much, much better. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.